A very good day, Doctor. My name is Christine, matrix number 281614, and I am going to present on my study on FM Global Logistics Holdings Berhad in Malaysia, which focuses on the operational risk and its determinants. So these are the contents ranging from introduction, literature review, methodology, findings and analysis, and lastly, discussions and conclusions. So there are two problems stated in this project, the first being supply chain disruptions, which is due to a significant surge of freight rates in 2019 due to a global COVID-19 pandemic. And the second problem stated in this project is the transportation disruptions caused by excessive consumer demand and insufficient cargo space, which increases the transportation cost. In this study, I have developed three research objectives, which is consists of internal factors, external factors, and the correlation of internal and external factors that influence the selected company's operational risk. And the research questions developed is, does the internal factors, external factors, and the correlation between internal and external factors that influence the selected company associate with the company's operational risk? Moving on to literature review, starting off with the dependent variable, which is operational risk. It is defined as the potential loss in a business that resulted from inefficient or failed systems, internal processes, people, or from external events. And the two measurements of operational risk in this study is operational ratio and operating margin. And the formulas for these two ratios is as follows. So for independent variables of operational risk, there are four independent variables, which the first being performance risk, which is an internal variable, and it is measured by profitability. And the two profitability indicators are return on assets and return on equity. The second internal variable is liquidity risk, which is the risk that a business may have insufficient funds to meet the financial obligations. And liquidity risk is measured with current ratio. Whereas credit risk is the possibility that a financial loss results from a borrower's failure in repaying a loan. And it is calculated by debt to income ratio and the average collection period in days. Whereas the last external variable is the market risk. And market risk determinants are GDP growth, inflation rate, interest rate, average exchange rate, and unemployment rate. For methodology, starting off with sampling technique, the unit of analysis in this study is the Malaysia's transportation and logistics industry, while the population selected is FM Global Logistics Holdings Berhad, and the analysis period is five years, ranging from 2017 up till 2021. And the analysis data is the information gathered from the annual reports of the company from the five years. For statistical technique, my primary technique is by using SPSS 27 version, by using the ordinary least squares regression analysis, or also known as multiple linear regression. And from the annual reports, I have derived monetary information to analyze the internal factors, whereas for the macroeconomic factors that influence the dependent variables, I have derived this information from Yahoo Finance. An Excel database is used to illustrate the statistical data and economic trends by drawing charts, diagrams, and tables. For data analysis, I have developed three models that correlate with the research objectives mentioned before which is the first model to analyze the correlation of internal factors, the second model analyzes the correlation of external factors, and the third model analyzes the relationship between internal and external factors towards the operational ratio. So, moving on to Chapter 4, Findings and Analysis, starting off with descriptive statistics, the internal variable of the selected company that has the highest volatility is the average collection period which is specified under credit risk with a mean of 81 days and a standard deviation of 3.2988, while the external variable with the highest volatility is GDP growth with a mean of 2.48 and a standard deviation of 4.6203. For correlations, I have used the Pearson coefficient and the p-value, and they are interpreted together and the outcome is in the table as you can see on the left side. And there are four internal variables which prove significant towards operational ratio, and they are ROA, 
ROE, operating margin, and debt-to-income ratio. And between these four significant variables, one variable is positively correlated to the dependent variable, which is debt-to-income ratio, and the other three variables, ROA, ROE, and operating margin, are negatively correlated to operational ratio. And it can be seen that no external variable shows significance towards operational ratio. For model summary, it can be seen that only model 1, the internal model, is proved to be the most significant to the dependent variable because it has an adjusted R square of 0 0.999, which is the closest to 1, and it has the highest value among all the three models. And it is evident to say that almost 100% of the data from firm-specific variables will fit to the internal model's linear regression. And out of the six independent variables, only three, uh, current ratio, average collection period, and operating margin contributed to the company's operational risk. For ANOVA, it is also found that Model 1 proved to be the most significant model for the dependent variables with a p-value of 0 0.019. And this denotes that the firm-specific variables, current ratio, average collection period, and operating margin affects the company's operational ratio. According to the coefficients table, it is also proved that only Model 1 is significant to the dependent variable. And as you can see in the table, only one variable significantly influenced but negatively correlates to operational ratio, which is the operating margin. With a p-value of 0.011 and a standardized coefficients beta of negative 0.987. And this is also supported by individual testing. When tested individually, operating margin is significant to the dependent variable, while average collection period and current ratio is not significant to the dependent variable. Moving to chapter 5, to conclude the whole study, between the three regression models used, only model 1, the internal model, proved to be the most significant because it has an R-square value equals to 1. Hence, there is substantial evidence that the internal variables has a more significant influence on the company's operational risk than external variables model 2 and internal and external variables model 3. And after analyzing the results of the correlations and coefficients data, it is obvious that operating margin has the biggest influence on the company's operational risk. And pertaining to the three research objectives developed, only objective number one is realizable as the internal variables model has the most significant impact on operational risk. For recommendations, it is evident now that a higher operating margin and a lower operational ratio is very favorable. And to improve operating margin, there are three recommendations that could be executed, which the first being reducing the cost of goods. This will increase operating margin on products or services if prices are kept at current levels, thus it will increase the company's income. And the second recommendation is to improve inventory management, which may help the company in making better decisions around purchasing and sales thus enabling the company to sell more products. And the last recommendation is to boost staff productivity because it can reduce operational drag that consumes valuable time and people are prevented from getting things done. So that will be all from me. I hope the presentation is sufficient and understandable. I'll end this video with a thank you.